Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, friends. What's going on? I hope you're doing well. As we are getting started here, I would love for you to say hello. Uh, let me know where you are watching from. And uh, whether or not you're applying this cycle, hello from Seattle, Los Angeles. Hello, Eric, Emily, what's going on? Excited to have you all here today. Vancouver, British Columbia, Denver, Colorado, San Francisco, Mississippi. Hello, friends. Brianna from Los Angeles. Fatima, New York. Tyler from Oregon. What's going on, friends? All right. Uh, let me open up my little document here. Let me bring that over here. Make sure we're ready to rock. Uh, from Boston. Uh, where where in the cycle are you all? Um, where in the cycle are you all? Anyone applying this cycle? Two interviews this week. Awesome. Third year pre-med freshman twins. Excuse me. Incoming college freshman. That's super early. Glad you're here. Marina applying in June. Senior applying this cycle. Awesome, awesome. All right. Let me open up. The right document this time. Awesome. All right. So today we're going to uh, be talking about the medical school interview. Uh, we're going to talk about how to make an impression in your interview without planning answers to all the questions. Because that, to me, is probably one of the biggest mistakes that students make when they are going through this process is they are trying to figure out how to answer every single question and they are preparing for every single question. So today we're going to talk about uh, how to not do that. Uh, and a lot of what we're going to talk about today is kind of relevant for the application in general uh, and not just interviews. Hopefully we'll have a super productive day. Uh, we'll have tons of time for Q&A at the end. We have a little exercise as well. So who's ready to get started uh, with our workshop? today. Marina, let's do this. Love it. Let's do this. So um, yeah, let's let's talk about our friend here. I'm guessing for many of you, this isn't the first time you've looked up advice uh, on the medical school interview. Uh, if you feel intimidated or anxious about the medical school interview, guess what? That's completely normal. And especially for a lot of you earlier uh, students out there earlier in the in the process, students out there being nervous about the whole process, completely, completely normal, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, just it just is. There's we don't have to place any judgment on it. Um, so uh, clearly, you don't know who I am. I love that one. So this is uh, one of my favorite memes. Right? Sounds terrifying. Uh, being grilled by an interviewer all these difficult questions, not just questions about yourself and why you wanna be a doctor, but possibly questions about those bad grades you got freshman year, or even ethical questions about abortion or physician-assisted suicide. It's totally normal to feel anxious about your uh, interview and about the, the things that you're thinking about of what's coming and all of that. The good news is, here's the secret, right? This is the secret. The good news is, it's in this meme, right? If you approach the interview the right way, it doesn't have to be so stressful. It can actually be fun, as hard as that is to believe. So before we get started, I just want to say this. I'm here to make the interview much more approachable for you, because I know you have this dream to serve patients as a physician, and I want to help you live that life. Live those dreams. Sound good? How many of you think, <laughs> when you think about the medical school interview, you, you think of that little like werewolf looking thing on the left? 
that what you have pictured? What this process is going to be like? What the interview is going to be like? The werewolf is the ad com. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not, though. Uh, <laughs> I was interviewed by vampires. Um, awesome. Uh, good movie. <laughs> let's keep let's keep rocking here. Um, so how many of you that are here have had interviews before? How many of you um have had interviews? Maybe you're a reapplicant. Uh, let's let's start there. See who's had experience here. The werewolf is my anxiety and the dog is reality, usually. Yes. Well, welcome to stress and anxiety and all of that good stuff. Awesome. Doesn't look like maybe anyone at least willing to uh, to uh, own up to uh, having that interview. Oh, Emily's got one. All right. So our workshop today is going to hopefully help you with these two big issues with your medical school interview. First one being interview anxiety, right? As as we just mentioned, the anxiety is the werewolf. The reality is the the golden retriever lab or whatever that is look like a golden retriever i don't know uh what you'll learn today hopefully will help decrease your anxiety around the interview uh, now like i said right anxiety is natural but it really can be eased with the right perspective and preparation and that's what we're going to hopefully be talking a lot about today you can see i have a couple examples here of people talking about um their interview success and just really what it what it felt like to them, right? Following this advice, I was able to feel confident during my medical school interview. 18 applications, seven interview invites, went to four, accepted at all of them. Our student here um, uh, read the book, read it religiously, crushed it, right? Heard back from three schools. This has matriculated at, at, at all three, but obviously uh, accepted at all three. You can only matriculate to one. Uh, got the book, helped me calm my nerves, realized that I deserve to be there. Love it. Love it. Love it. Went really well. It was all MMIs, and I love them. So much fun, to be honest. I got the best energy at the school, too. Awesome. So issue number two, right? We have anxiety, and now we have interview performance. And interview performance is an interesting one because um, – Right, what uh, what students are thinking they're doing, uh, and the goal of the interview is is what we're going to talk about with interview performance, and what you'll learn in this workshop will help you truly make an impression in your interview. It can help it it can help you be memorable and win advocates for you uh, in the admissions committee. So we're going to talk all about that as well. This email came from a non-trad I worked with who was accepted after 10 years on the pre-med path, All right? I had one shot, one interview. You helped me tremendously. The admissions dean said it was a unanim unanimous vote, and they remembered me well from my interview. I love getting these messages. Hopefully one day when you guys uh, are getting into medical school, you will you will also send me these notes. Knocked it out of the park. I'll be seeing you next year. This was a student um, uh, who got into Colorado. So that's why they were, they were saying, I'll see you next year because I'm on faculty there. Awesome. Uh, interview beta course. Multiple admissions officers told me that my extracurricular descriptions interviews were some of the best they'd ever seen. Love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, so lots of great stuff. So my message for you in this workshop today are kind of twofold here. Right. So why the med school interview is less scary than you think it is and how to prep for your interview without memorizing scripted answers, because that is the ultimate goal. Um, yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Allison, previous Zoom interview, in-person interview coming up. Awesome. Love it, love it, love it. Let's keep rocking. 
Um, all right. So who am I? For those of you who might not know, um, I am uh, a physician, Dr. Ryan Gray. Um, uh, went to New York Medical College, did the Air Force HPSP scholarship to pay for medical school, um, have been doing medical school headquarters, talking about getting into medical school for 12 years now. To what? I was going to say 10, 10, 12 years now. Uh, I've written lots of books and uh, do lots of amazing, fun stuff. So uh, one of the biggest things I get to do is talk to uh, deans and directors of admissions through the pre-med years podcast. I speak all over. I also have a YouTube channel, if any of you have seen that. Um, and through this whole process, the the thing that I realized the most was there's a big problem with how students approach the interview. And this one problem leads to more anxiety and worse performance. This one problem leads to more anxiety and worse performance. Are you ready to hear what this problem is? Yes, yes. Before I do it, though, I want to hear from you. What do you think the problem is? One problem. One problem. What do you think the problem is? See how close uh, you get. Imposter syndrome, not being authentic, being secretly judged by being... <laughs> <laughs> sounding like a robot not being authentic anxiety self-doubt all of those are kind of circling around circling around for me for me the big problem is what you think the goal of the interview is oh wait where'd it go there it is right the problem is you think you're supposed to sell yourself Comment in the chat if you've heard this advice to sell yourself in your application or especially in your interviews. It's very, very common advice. But I believe, I believe it's poor advice and I'll explain that in a moment. So when, let, let me clarify, right? When I say sell yourself, it can mean all of these different things. All of these things, you're trying to convince the interviewer about you. All of these things on your agenda, right, are trying to be crammed into the conversation. But that's what you think you're supposed to do in the interview, right? And unfortunately, that's not very good advice. This is not what you should be doing if you want to make an impression and get accepted. You can do it, in my opinion. This is not what leads to an acceptance. Um, I have a, a couple anecdotes here. Natalie, I love, yep, make it like a business interview. The worst advice ever. The worst, that that deserves my, my Zoom face. The worst advice ever. Oh no, Zoom face froze. The worst advice ever. Don't do, don't do that. Not a business interview. Um, Natalie was uh, someone who had to apply to medical school three times. First application cycle didn't go well, just her application wasn't ready. Second application cycle, she she crushed her application, improved her grades, showed who she was supposed to be, went on her interviews, and then bombed her interviews. Bombed her interviews. Was rejected from every school that she applied to or interviewed at. Third application cycle, she found me. This was uh, many years ago now at this point. Um, we did multiple interviews together and her first interview with me was atrocious. And I was like, oh, <laughs> now I know why you didn't get into medical school because she was sitting there trying to sell herself. She just had the wrong perspective, the wrong goal in mind. And once she fixed that, she ended up with lots of acceptances, her third application cycle. She went from all rejections to six acceptances moving forward. So, yeah, 
six acceptances before we did these mock interviews together, right? Six, ex uh, six interviews, zero acceptances. And then after 10 interviews, six acceptances. We love Natalie. We love telling her story. It was very easy because ultimately she was great at talking. She was just focused on the wrong thing. And in this workshop, I'm going to teach you some of what I taught her. Ready? Take a sip of water. Ask you guys a question. Ready? Ready to learn what I taught her? Yes, please. <laughs> Michelle. Love it. Love it. All right. So the three big secrets about the medical school interview. I'm about to share with you uh, these three big secrets that uh, will hopefully help you understand the mindset shift you really need to have. Secret number one, why trying to sell yourself is a mistake. Secret number two, what to do instead of selling yourself. And secret number three, how to use mock interviews the right way. And we'll also be doing an exercise where a couple of you can come on camera and get some live feedback on your answers. So stay tuned for that. So secret number one, why trying to sell yourself is a mistake. So let's start with an analogy. The medical school interview is like a dance. The interviewer leads and you follow. You have to listen and respond to what they're asking you. It's a back and forth. But when you come into your interview trying to sell yourself, it's like you're stepping all over their feet. You're trying to lead while they're trying to lead you. They said, tell me about yourself. But now you're trying to list off your whole CV of accomplishments or tell a story about how you're so dedicated. Instead of connecting and letting them know who you really are, you have an agenda. You're not acting like a real, genuine person. It's not natural. It's not enjoyable. And it doesn't work. When your agenda is to sell yourself, you miss opportunities to actually connect with your interviewer. And they struggle to connect with you too. So what do we do instead? All right? That's the biggest question. We'll get to that. One of my favorite quotes here from Dr. Layla Amiri. She is now the Dean of Admissions at Vermont Learner College of Medicine. The biggest negative comment that I get from interviewers, and I feel this way as well, is, quote, he or she did not, right? They did not give me the opportunity to meet them. Meaning the student just went in and, and tried to force this narrative trying to be the person they thought the interviewer wanted them to be. And all that interview wanted was to know who you are, not to be who you think that you, that they want you to be. This is, uh, again, for pre-med years, episode 288. You can just go to premedyears.com slash 288 for that. I will type it here in the chat, premedyears.com slash 288. It's a great episode that I love. This is the effect you get when you're selling yourself too much. You don't let the interviewer actually meet you. And that is the biggest mistake when you're trying to sell yourself. So we don't want to do that. Trying to sell yourself also makes you blend in with all of the other applicants. You think you're standing out by selling yourself, but ultimately what you're doing is you're blending in because everyone is doing the same thing. Medical school interviewers get bored of all the students coming in and pitching them on why they're motivated, hardworking, smart, et cetera. It all starts to blend together. In this kind of environment, selling yourself really doesn't work because it's what's expected. It's boring. We don't want to do that. And also, <laughs> one last point before we move on, you don't need to sell yourself. 
by the time you got to interview day, the medical school already knows that you're amazing. They've already read your application. They've seen these things that you've achieved. And they invited you. They invited you because they like you already. And now they just want to meet you. So that should really be the biggest predictor or or kind of key to knowing that you don't have to sell yourself. They know that you're amazing. They you have to realize that the interview spots are a limited commodity. Med schools are not just handing them out to be generous. If you got an interview, it means this medical school thinks you have what it takes to be accepted. So if you're coming into your interview feeling insecure about your GPA, your MCAT, or how your activities compare to someone else, just realize they've already had the chance to reject you. And they didn't. They already had that chance to reject you, and they didn't. They've invited you for an interview because they were impressed. So you don't need to keep selling how amazing you are. So hopefully, I've made my point here. You don't need to sell yourself. And in fact, I think it's hurting you. So before we move on to secret two, do you see kind of the point of view that I'm coming from here? So potentially a little counter to, to what you've thought or maybe what you've been told. But I hope that it seems a little logical. Like, oh, yeah, like if everyone's saying they're the hardest working, who am I supposed to believe, <laughs> right? If everyone says they're hardworking, I don't, uh, I don't know who's the hardest working. Can you, can you actually say that? You can't. It's impossible. No, nobody says it's logical. So I guess this isn't making any sense. Oh, well, friends. All right. <laughs> Nobody like that. Yes, they invited you. It makes it make sense. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks, Marina. Uh, glad one person is listening. All right. So let's keep rocking here. Um, so secret number two. Let's talk about what to focus on instead of selling yourself. First... First, we must ask the question, what is the purpose of the medical school interview, All right? Before we can identify what you should do in your interview, we need to ask, what's the purpose of the interview? Why do med schools even do interviews at all? What's your thought in the chat? Comment in the chat why you think they do interviews. It's funny, um, just, just randomly, uh, we were for for our software platform mapped. We were doing some research on PA schools, and there's a PA school that doesn't do any interviews. There's also a med school that doesn't do any interviews. So why are there schools that don't do interviews? See if we fit their program. They want to know you better, to get to know you as a person, to see if you will be a good fit for their community. Love it, love it, love it. To find applicants that are a good match for their community, get to know you. Love it. Get a sense of who you are outside of your stats. All good points. So let's talk about what the interview is not. Right? The interview is not about grilling or interrogating you, checking if you're competent enough to be a doctor, rehashing everything on your app. Here's roughly what med schools are looking for in the interview. These are things they can't tell very easily from your application. So they want to get you in person slash virtual, right? And get a feel for these things. Getting to know you, right? As a person outside of your application, which someone said. Seeing how you communicate and work with others. Seeing if they'd trust you taking care of their loved ones. That's the big one for me. Is when, I, when I'm talking with students, uh, I tell them my job as the interviewer is try to envision you taking care of my loved one in the hospital. If I get a, a sense of unease, then you're probably not going to get accepted. The more down to earth, the more normal, the more natural, the more that you're able to communicate and show who you are, the better you'll be at that connection. And they'll go, oh yeah, I can see this person 
taking care of my loved one at the bedside. So if that's the person, uh, the purpose of the interview, well, what should you focus on instead of selling yourself? So let's go to, um, let's go to another analogy. This time we're going to talk about the coffee shop. I love talking about the medical school interview as chatting with a friend or a colleague over coffee, the coffee shop conversation, let's call it. I like this analogy because really you want your medical school interview to be a conversation, not an interview. A conversation lets you build an actual connection with your interviewer as a real human being. It lets you show who you really are and it helps build that trust in the relationship. So here's what to focus on. Instead of selling, it's connection. Focus on connecting as a human being to another human being. Assuming <laughs> assuming we still have interviewers running running the humans running the interviews, right? With ChatGPT and AI, and maybe it's a robot in the future. We don't know. But for now, let's uh let's say hey, this is human to human. Uh not as an interviewee to an interviewer. Human to human conversation, not interviewee to interviewer. And it's a very different um, kind of premise that feels a little bit weird to begin with. But I promise you, when you do it, it's like, oh, this is very different. So let's have an example here. Tell me about yourself. It's one of the cleanest, clearest places you have an opportunity to connect rather than sell yourself in the interview. When the interviewer says, tell me about yourself, that's your invitation, invert, invitation, invitation to take the conversation wherever you want it to go. And most students start selling themselves right away, right? Don't do that. Don't just list off your medical and academic interests. Instead, be personal. Talk about where you grew up. Talk about your hobbies, your passions. Talk about your love of travel or sports, your, your siblings, your pets, your parents. Here's the goal. Keep talking until you find a connection with the interviewer. Maybe they'll say, oh, I have a dog too. What breed is yours? Or, oh, I grew up in that area too. And then obviously, you're not always going to have a connection. You can't literally keep talking until you find that connection. But throw out enough stuff, right? If you're like, oh, I love to read books. Don't just say that. Talk about what genre of books you've read. Talk about the last book you read. Or talk about the next book you're going to read. The more little individual kernels of truth about and authenticity about who you are, the better chances you'll be have to connect. You'll be able to connect and chat as a human being to another human being. Suddenly, instead of being interviewed, you're having a conversation about football teams, being a mom, or even about Pomeranians. <laughs> You'll be so surprised how this approach changes the tone of your interview. And a lot of students get very confused because they're like, well, if if we just talk about sports for 30 minutes or we talk about whatever for 30 minutes, so that my dog or, or Star Wars, I had one student talk about, I think it was Vanderbilt. Um, she was at a Vanderbilt Vanderbilt interview, medical school interview, and she's like, oh, the the interviewer had like a Star Wars uh, bobblehead or something, a little pop um, uh, on on their shelf, and we talked about it, and then we just we just talked about Star Wars for thirty minutes, and then student other students are like, well, how are they supposed to know you're going to be a good doctor? <laughs> Knowing you're going to be a good doctor is all about your ability to communicate. Right again, they know your grades. They know your MCAT score. They know you're smart enough to be a doctor. They know you're going to be able to learn. Being a good doctor is all about connecting human to human. And that's the biggest disconnect, right? You all think that you have to show you're going to be a good doctor. And being a good doctor means being hardworking and determined and blah, 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 right? But ultimately, being a good doctor just means being a good human being and be able to have that conversation. Make sense? I hope so. Because it's huge. It is huge. All right, this student <clears throat> sent me their, their uh, tell me about yourself uh, 
uh, set up the whole interview up for success, right? During the interview, I answered, tell me about yourself exactly as you recommend in your video. I mentioned my enjoyment of the outdoors, found out that my interviewer was a Boy Scout leader, and the conversation went off smoothly from there. It set the tone for the rest of the interview. Ended up with a 499 twice on the MCAT um, and didn't have high hopes, but they were accepted. This student here, um, all three interviews, I spent most of the time just talking about common interests that were completely unrelated to medicine. Without your help, I probably would have never set myself up for that kind of interview with the tell me about yourself question. Your advice to be a normal person and have a conversation like a first date, pure gold, pure gold. People, be a normal person. Don't be someone who thinks, oh, I have to tell them that I'm really hardworking. <laughs> they know you're really hardworking. You got good enough grades. You got a good enough MCAT score. In the thick of all of that, you were getting clinical experience. You're doing research potentially. You're doing shadowing. They know you're hardworking. You don't need to sit there in the interview and tell them that. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, love this one. My grades were never brought up in any of my interviews. Not once. Instead, my interviewers wanted to talk about my powerlifting competitions, dogs, and why I thought some students dropped out of med school. <clears throat> and don't let C's or dumb advisors stop you. Oh, man. <clears throat> don't do that, my friends. What a relief. Honestly, yes. Perfect, perfect response, Marina. Because ultimately, every time I have this conversation with students, there's a, a just a wash of relief that you can see on students to go, oh, the interview is not what I thought it was. It's actually a lot easier. I just have to go and be myself. I know some of you are scared of who you are, but that's okay. Let's let's work on that. That's what therapy is for. But the interview itself, <clears throat> the interview itself is all about just connecting and being a human. That's all. So let's keep chatting. Oh, Man, so the key to a good interview after all that. So, right, what what are you supposed to do? Secret number two, what are you supposed to do? Connect with the interviewer. Connect with the interviewer. <clears throat> all right, secret number three, let's talk about using mock interviews the right way. Buvana or Buvana? Buvana? Uh, that was I. Good. I'm glad, right? Simple. And there was nothing super magical there. I'm like, let's just talk logic, right? To me, it's just it's just pure logic. So hopefully that was good. All right, let's uh, talk about mock interviews. How do we use them? For me, mock interviews are key, but not for the reason you think. <clears throat> yes, you should be doing mock interviews, even though a lot of students go about them the wrong way. You take... Practice tests for the MCAT, right? It's not about just knowing the content. And it's not just about individual practice questions either. When you take realistic time MCAT practice tests, you get comfortable with that whole experience. And you need to do the same thing with mock interviews. But that doesn't mean you should memorize all of your answers. This is not about memorizing. Let's go back to our analogy of the, the coffee shop conversation. How would you prepare for that kind of conversation? Would you memorize exact answers to every possible question your, your friend's going to ask? Would you practice using a specific framework for everything that you're going to say? No, you wouldn't. Right? It's not like you're, you're standing at the door ready to go in going, okay, Sally's going to ask me how my, how my week was since I saw her last. She's going to ask me about my mom because my mom's been sick. She's going to ask me about how that class was that I had a midterm in. I, how am I going to answer those questions? Well, let's talk about the STAR method. What's the situation? What's the task? I, I don't even know what STAR. <laughs> I don't even know the STAR method. Right? It sounds like anxiety. That's what people do right? When they go into the interview. But when you walk into a coffee shop to meet your friend, some people have that anxiety, right? And, and I'm not making light of anxiety. Some people truly have anxiety and they're really anxious for that situation. But most of us don't. 
but a lot of you premature prematurely that's not not the right word uh artificially add anxiety into the medical school interview because that's how you're preparing okay you don't need to to be rigid and over rehearsed for a conversation that's not what you need to do so what's rule number one of interview prep don't over prepare right <laughs> So what's the number one rule of Fight Club? You don't talk about Fight Club. The first rule of how not to use a mock interview is you just don't over-prepare. Don't script everything out word for word and memorize it. If you try to memorize exact answers, you'll trip over yourself. You'll miss the opportunity to follow tangents with your interviewer and make it a real two-way connection, and you'll sound rehearsed. You'll be so stuck on your script and and so focused on, especially if the interviewer like interrupted you or cut you off to to make a point or add something, you'll be like, oh shoot, where was I in my script? That you you're not even thinking about what the interviewer is saying. You're just like, oh shoot, where was I? Where was I? Was there? And the, and they're sitting there talking to you, and you're just like completely blank staring at them because you're too worried about your script. And you're like, oh shoot, if I start there, oh it's repeating myself. And I, if I go there, I think I missed a line. Don't do that. You don't want to sound rehearsed. So what's the right way to use a mock interview? The right way for me to use a mock interview is to try things out. It's to get comfortable with the experience of being uncomfortable. And it's to practice speaking off the cuff about topics you didn't prepare for. One of the things that I've been saying a lot, I don't think it's in this slide deck, one one of the things that I say a lot lately is the interviewer the the interview and practicing mock interviews rather is all about being prepared to answer any question, not being prepared to answer every question. Do you see that little nuance there? It's being comfortable answering any question, not being prepared to answer every question. Preparing to answer every question is literally using my book, which it's one of those things, right? Uh, in in my, my book, The Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Interview, there's a list of like 600 questions in here. And I know that some of you will read this book and go through every question and have an answer prepared for it. That's not the goal of interview prep. The goal of interview prep is to know that on your interview day, you're going to get a question that you didn't prepare for. How are you going to to handle it. When you and I have a conversation, I'm not prepared for everything you're going to say. I listen, I process, I have a brain, and I respond, right? Uh, I use my my Wernicke's area and Broca's area to interpret, respond, and go through that process. That's communication. So, One more tip, get feedback. Ideally, you're doing mock interviews with an advisor or mentor who knows medical school interviews specifically. As someone mentioned earlier about the business interview, this is not a business interview. You have to focus on being comfortable with the process. Try things out, see how they work. Don't memorize exact scripts. One of the things that uh, I tell students to work on is um, bullet points, right? So tell me about yourself, right? Rather, let's just focus on that one. And we'll have an, uh, an exercise here in a minute. Um, tell me about yourself. It's not about, okay, I have my whole script here. It's, well, here's where I'm from. Here's my parents. Here's my siblings. Here's my pet. Here's my passion, right? Five bullet points that I'm going to use that I can kind of adjust on the fly, but I know those five bullet points are kind of my rock. And on interview day, I'm going to let my brain fill in the space between the bullet points. And I may be able to add in some topical thing like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And oh, yeah, that that earthquake or oh, blah, 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 the solar eclipse, right? Things that you can work in that aren't built into your script that make it more conversational. Huh. So using... 
mock interviews to get comfortable with the situation. That is the answer for this one. All right, so let's do an exercise, my friends. Now the fun part. Let me actually get to the slide. Now the fun part. Who wants to practice? Go ahead and raise your hand if you can unmute yourself and uh, dive into uh, being public here, answering tell me about yourself and getting feedback from me. Use a little hand raise tool in Zoom. Bueller, Bueller. Nobody. I know someone out there will do it as soon as I say something. All right, I guess we're not going to do an exercise today. Oh, see, as soon as I said <laughs> the key words, Stacy, why'd you wait so long to raise your hand? Oh, nerves. <laughs> like somebody said, it is nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I am so sorry. I just came in late, so I'm going to give it my best try. I caught like the part where you talked about um how vital it is to have like your five things that you kind of bounce off of. And then, you know, um. so I'm going to just. Uh, all right. We're yeah, going to try. Gonna... Yes, try. It's You're, all here. About try. You're here. You're yeah. here. You're braver than everyone else here. So. <laughs> All right. So Stacy, so, tell me about mm -hmm. yourself. Hi, my name is Stacy. I'm born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya, but I moved to the United States um about a decade ago. Um, I'm really uh, passionate about um, you know, um the youth. I am the president of a nonprofit organization at my university that um, we basically mentor high school youth. Um, and yeah, um, my one of my future aspirations is to serve as a physician. Um, I think it is incredibly important to serve underrepresented communities. Um, and that's kind of like my main drive uh, towards um, pursuing medicine. So yeah, that's a little about me. Jumbo, how about Ayako? Mzuri sana, now I wear. <laughs> I don't know anything more. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mazuri, Mazuri sana. Um, I, I, I was in Kenya many, many, many years ago for a couple weeks. Nice, nice. Beautiful uh, country, right? Beautiful country. And I'm dying to go back. Uh, yes. Did you we'll did you visit the Maasai Mara? Of course. Nice, nice. Course. That's amazing. Went awesome. to Mombasa, Maasai Mara. Wow. Went to Lake... Lake uh, I don't know. We went Victoria? to a couple. Uh, no, unfortunately, we didn't make it out to Victoria. Um, oh. uh, but yeah, we we worked at a HIV orphanage uh, just north of the city, up in upcountry a little bit. Um, That's amazing. And uh, during the week and then on the weekends, went on safari. It was awesome. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, awesome, your, awesome. your uh, pronunciation was great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad. So... Um, good job having just kind of come into this and, uh, and, um, kind of not hearing the rest of the rest of the pitch. So a little bit of why medicine built in there. It's, it's funny. My interview book, um, uh, does talk about working why medicine into tell me about yourself. I actually don't teach it that way anymore, uh, because it's, it's something that's really hard to do well, um, they're going to ask, why do you want to be a doctor? So you, for tell me about yourself, you don't need to talk about uh, kind of your your passions around what got you into healthcare or medicine. It's it's really just about who you are. So, right, coming from uh, Kenya, coming to the States, maybe what brought you to the States, um, and then diving into just kind of who you are as a person, passions, friends, family, do you love to travel? Do you love to read? These kind of things, again, where you can start to make that connection with the interviewer. And it was easier for you because as soon as you said you were from uh, Kenya, I was like, oh, like immediately I'm like, oh, I know what I'm going to say after this. And then so it just it opens up that that human to human connection. 
It's a great job. All right, who else wants to practice? See, it's not that scary. Not that scary. Come on. All right. Lindia. Yes, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Not too bad. It's a beautiful day. And it's the solar eclipse. It's eclipse day. Nice, nice. All right. So, Lindia, tell me about yourself. Well, I am Lindia Walker. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm the youngest of three siblings. I, I used to say that I didn't have a lot of hobbies because there weren't anything like racing or rock climbing. But I do really love watching televisions and movies. And I've just recently gotten back into reading. And before I used to read, I used to read a lot of what I used to read a lot of sci-fi. I used to read a lot of fiction and stuff like that. But now I'm very much into autobiographies. I don't know, just something about reading about people's lives and how they tackle certain obstacles that they have in their lives. It really like, I don't know if it motivates. Well, yeah, it motivates me. Other than that, I've been on the journey to be a pre-med for a while, and it's been a great journey. I've grown a lot from being in undergrad to now getting my MHS. And although it's been quote unquote long, I've really enjoyed it. What, uh, who, who's your favorite biography or autobiography to this point? Oh, no one ever asks me this question, but I have one always at the top of my head. It's called Lift a Tail by Immaculate Ili Begaza. I think I'm pronouncing her name right. But okay. it's about it's about how she survives the Rwandan genocide. Mm. And the subheading is it's discovering God amidst the Rwandan Holocaust. And it's about how her, and if I'm not mistaken, seven other women hid in the bathroom. And the bathroom was no bigger than if you stand up and stand in place move your arms a little bit, it's probably about that big. Wow. And she has pictures of it in the book, and it's about how she literally just rides after the Holocaust during that time there. Wow. That sounds uh, incredible. I'm I'm looking at it on uh, Amazon right now. When did it come out? It came out in 2014. Awesome. Yes. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. You should really <laughs> check it out. It was the first book that I picked up. We, I have a big bookcase in my house. And when I wanted to start reading again, I just went to the bookcase. I pulled out a book. I did not know that it would be this much of a tearjerker, but I stuck with it and it was great. Nice. Um, how did you think you did? Um, I feel like maybe the end kind of got a little rambly, but I can get like that sometime. Uh, maybe like a, Seven out of ten? Is that a safe score? Yeah, that's, <laughs> like good. that's always the safe number. Eight's a little a little too high. Six is a little too low. Seven is perfect. Seven seven's the non-committal number. <laughs> good. I right. yeah, you did great. I think um until the very end when you started to trail off into kind of the long process and undergrad and stuff, we didn't need that at the end. Uh up until that point. You you were doing uh great. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Farbad, hello. Hello there. Can you hear me? I can. All right, great. Farbad, tell me about yourself. Sure. Um, hi, my name is Farbad. Uh, I'm originally from Iran. I immigrated to Canada with my family back in 2014. And I've been staying in Toronto ever since. Um, I did a four-year undergrad and then a two-year graduate degree at U of T. Uh, outside school, uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, fantasy and sci-fi, especially Star Wars and comic books uh, and, and comic book movies. Um, I play a little bit of classical guitar, especially I prefer Spanish pieces. And uh, I recently had a trip to Montreal uh, where I know it's been a long time that I've been in Canada, but it was for the first time that I tried ice skating with my friend. And um, that's why, that's another reason for me that I prefer really, really cold climates. Um, beside uh, 
getting to wear my sweaters. Um, and then other than that, I've recently been getting into a little bit of wood carving. Uh, I'm not still great at it, but I try to make some small figurines using wood. And um, sometimes they turn out very pretty uh, if I don't cut my hands. So, <laughs> if you don't cut your hands. Yeah. Nice. Um, uh, you mentioned your, your love of sci-fi. Have you read Project Hail Mary yet? I have not. Um, I got to admit my love of sci-fi has been a little too uh, exclusive to Star Wars. Okay. Uh, and I agree that I have to broaden my horizons. But to be fair, Star Wars, I feel like is uh, is a big enough franchise for me to, to love specifically and exclusively. But I will try that. <laughs> What's the story about that book? Uh, so Project Hail Mary is written by Andy Weir, the same author of uh, The Martian which oh, cool. uh, obviously fan, fantastic movie, um, fantastic book. Uh, Project Hail Mary is all about um, the the sun potentially dying and uh, a crew sent to figure out why and all of the, the shenanigans that happen. Yeah. I will check that out. Yeah. yeah, really good. Awesome. Parbat, how do you think you did? I think I did uh, six and a half, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like I could have uh, explored a little bit of my hobbies, maybe. And I feel like it was a little bit of a short of an introduction. I'm not sure how you feel about that. Okay. I, yeah, like I, I don't know if I agree with it. it. I mean, you, you okay. talked about um, the guitar, specifically Spanish uh, kind of stuff. Um, you talked about the the passion for, for sci-fi and, and gave some examples about Star Wars and stuff there. So you, you dug into a couple – potential threads that I could pull and I, I pulled the sci-fi one. Um, so yeah, so I, I thought it was overall pretty good. You started off a little resume, um, uh, coming from Iran, but then you, you talked about kind of undergrad and, and U of T and stuff like that, that, that kind of stuff we don't need and tell me about yourself. All right. Good to know. Um, thank you. But yeah. Overall, overall pretty good. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome. Great job. All right. Is this helpful for you all to kind of see people uh, giving their answers, giving you kind of insight into potentially how to answer it for yourself? Like every Everyone's uh, raising their hand now. They're like, oh, this isn't so bad. This isn't so bad. All right. Mariah. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. How okay, because last time I remember my computer had issues. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, not again. Um, well, I'll tell you about myself. All right, Hi, tell me about yourself. Mariah. Yeah. I'm originally from Puyallup, Washington. It's a small suburb outside of Seattle in Washington and came out to Colorado for undergrad. And I love, I love it so much out here that I stayed because I'm a huge outdoors person. Me and my chocolate lab go and do all the 14ers and all the hikes out here. And yeah, I just love the outdoors, and I am the only girl out of five older brothers, so that taught me to be interested in kickboxing, <laughs> though maybe jujitsu might have helped a lot more growing up. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much about me. I'm the first one in my family to go to college, and that's a big part of my identity, because it's a big accomplishment for me and my family, and yeah. Awesome. Tell me about uh, five brothers. You're the youngest. You have five yes. brothers. Yes, some you're... are halves. Some are halves. But okay. I, yeah, five older brothers, and I'm the only. I'm the youngest and the only daughter and the only one to go to college. So yeah, yeah. they do make fun of me saying I'm like the star child <laughs> <laughs> or the favorite. black sheep. Depends on their perspective. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what what do you think it is? Right, obviously a blended family, so not not perfect comparison. But why? Why are you the the one that uh, went to college? Why why did what what was that motivation for you? Um, I saw how my brothers struggled a lot in high school, and I didn't like being labeled because my dad doesn't have the perfect track record, and they kind of fell into living that same lifestyle, and I didn't want that for me, and my mom didn't want that for me, and I just was like, you know what? I'm going to prove everyone wrong. I'm going to prove my teachers wrong. I'm going to prove the people who said I might not go to college or even graduate wrong. And I'm just going to learn how to study. By that time, we had YouTube and the internet. 
So I like would Google how to get good grades, and how do you do better in school? Because <laughs> nice. um, my mom worked a lot, so she didn't really have the ability to help me with homework or anything. So it was literally me Googling it and just figuring it yeah. out and just working hard. How do you think that's going to prepare you for med school? I think it gives me an interesting perspective coming from like a low economic socioeconomic background and like having the resiliency to overcome a lot of adversities. I have maybe it's a little bit of arrogance, but I know I can do anything if I put my best foot forward and just try my hardest. Even if I fail, I can I know I can get up and just try again. And maybe that's a little bit of naivety, but I just have that strong resiliency in my like core values. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. How do you think you did? I know I'm a little bit shaky. I'm a little anxious. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I hear, I hear some nerves in your voice. That's okay. That's a, that's not a bad thing, right? A lot of students will be like, Oh, it's terrible. Like you're nervous. You're allowed to be nervous. You're allowed to have some, some, uh, some nerves kind of take control and tighten your vocal cords and make, make your voice a little, uh, kind of wavy, whatever. So that's, that's not a, an issue. Um, was there anything that you wanted to say, but you're like, Oh shoot. Like I shouldn't say that uh, that's selling myself. Yeah. Like I kind of tried to avoid like the first gen and low sec socioeconomic in the beginning. Cause I'm like, Oh, they'll probably see that on my app mm -hmm. or what if, cause you know, I know AMCAS can be weird in how they decide low socioeconomic. I think they'll consider me. I didn't get the FAP, so I know that they can view different economic statuses differently. So I was like, yeah. maybe I shouldn't say it if they don't think I am, because then they think maybe I'm making stuff up. Maybe I should avoid <laughs> disadvantages. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. No, I, I, thought, uh, I thought you did great. Uh, and Samantha says, I vote admit. <laughs> so you got one, one, uh, vote for admission. I'll go to Samantha's medical school. She opens <laughs> Welcome <up. laughs> to, uh, Psalm Samantha's, uh, wait, no. So uh, wait, it has to be, uh, S S Psalm Samantha school of medicine. Um, awesome. Good job. That was great. Mariah. All right, let's do one more. Sasha or Sasha? Hi, can you hear me? I can. Hi, um, my name is Sasha. I am just outside of Worcester, Massachusetts. And Worcester. I do have a bit of an accent. My cousins from the Midwest say that I do. I say wicked a bunch. And <laughs> I talk to patients at work. I say things like coffee. So... I get fun of it, made fun of it a little bit, but um, I would say the biggest way to describe me is that I am the oldest daughter of an immigrant family. Just about any stereotype you could think about to describe the oldest daughter would probably fit me. A little bit cliche, but the latest hobby that I picked up is cooking and baking. Um, I've always loved cooking. I thought it, I've always thought it was kind of a universal language in a way to connect to people and to just help people when words fail you a little bit. And translating that into cookies, I think is even more universal and muffins, things like that. Things that people just generally like, you know, everyone's going to want a chocolate chip cookie if they're feeling sad or it, it's just something that I found really helps people relate to each other. And actually, right before this, I was making um, carrot cake cookies to bring into work tomorrow. And hopefully, hopefully they'll go over well. But um, aside from that, I think one of my passions is reading. And I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of podcasts, medical podcasts, news podcasts, anything to really keep my mind occupied, I think is a big passion of mine. So, yeah. What's your favorite podcast? Um, I love The Daily with Michael Barbaro. Okay. I love the way he narrates stories and just communicates the news and like an effective and a digestible way that makes it entertaining and fun. But yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. How'd you think you did? Um, I don't know. I feel like it was a little bit shaky. I was definitely nervous at first and feel like I got a bit rambly, but I think it could have been better. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so Rambly, you got Rambly with the cooking stuff. It, you kind mm-hmm. of got stuck in a cycle talking about cooking, and it's <laughs> like you couldn't fi- figure out a way out of it. Um, and that's just that just comes with practice. Like, where where do you want to go? I often talk about uh, kind of a GPS analogy with answering questions, and it's a it's saying, okay, uh, I know where I'm at. I know where I want to go. Now I'm just gonna get there. A lot of people they know where they're at and they just go and then they're like, Oh shoot, I don't know where I'm going. Do I turn left? Do I turn right? I, I don't know how to get to where I'm going. I don't know how to get off this, this uh, kind of roundabout I'm, I'm in. And so just having a, an idea as you continue to practice kind of building that um, kind of those bullet points of the things that you want to talk about um, you'll get a better sense of exactly how to hit what you want to hit and then move on without kind of getting stuck. Thank you. You're welcome. Great job. All right. Um, let's uh, let's move on, and then we'll go to some Q and A. Um, I just have a couple slides that I would love to chat about. Mariah, you've seen these since you were at our last one. Um, so the big the big one here. Uh, is that this is um, not uh, it's it's not a big secret on how to do well with the medical school interview. At the end of the day, it's it's really just um, hopefully being yourself. And and I think I just I probably taught you more about med school interviews than most pre meds will ever know because they're not here hanging out with us today. And now you know that focusing on connecting and not selling yourself. Uh, you know uh, how to start things off right with a personal answer to tell me about yourself. You know how to use mock interviews, get more comfortable. You also saw some quotes from some pre-meds, some messages from pre-meds uh, talking about their experience. So um, do you think do you think you can be successful preparing for your interviews now? Are you going to be more comfortable, uh, more confident going into your interviews knowing what you know now? I hope so. I hope so. And hopefully you're you're like a friend from from Anchorman here. <laughs> I love this guy. Um so hopefully um what I hope that you're feeling is after this is that you're relieved, right? I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier that when I talk to students, I, I often sense relief. And I hopefully hopefully you're relieved that the interviewer is actually much less scary than you thought it was gonna be. So um, I would love to spend just a couple minutes. I want to talk about um, our awesome Application Academy platform. And I'm going to specifically kind of angle it in terms of the interview process because what you saw today in terms of people coming on, practicing a question, getting feedback, um, that's what Application Academy is. It's a group um, advising platform or program where on a Zoom call, you're with other students and there's almost 70 people in here now. Application Academy is typically 10 people during a session, so it's a lot more uh, a lot more private, uh, but it's still a group setting. It's not one-on-one. It is group coaching. Um, we've helped um, over 1,000 students to date go through Application Academy over the course of three or four years now that we've had it. Um, it's awesome, and we have so many amazing uh, messages from students. I'm just going to flip through these, just talking about, uh, the community of application Academy, the, um, support of application Academy and what, uh, what they're able to get out of it. So just kind of a, a peek inside application Academy, just what it looks like. Um, you hit, there's lots of modules, pre-recorded modules going through, what Application Academy is all about and kind of teaching you the whole application. Application Academy is not just interviews, it's everything. All of the personal statements, all of the activity descriptions, how to write these things, how not to write them, examples, all kinds of good stuff. Um, Secondary essay, school list, TMDSAS, interview prep, all the good stuff. And then you can see here, This is these are recordings of office hours. So similar today, we could call this, hey, this is an interview office hours. We're going to talk about interview prep. We're going to bring students on to answer questions, MMI style, traditional style, 
all that kind of good stuff. And if you can't make it live, we record it and you get amazing feedback. This is what it looks like for um, essay review. So instead of obviously bringing someone on to practice a, an interview question, students submit uh, parts of their essays, uh, secondaries, primaries, all that kind of good stuff. And we review them as a group. You can see that it's anonymous. There's no names here. Um, they're just submitted with little codes that students remember. And uh, they can go back and watch the feedback later or they're on live with us. Most students don't use Application Academy live. They watch recordings of everything. They can still submit stuff and all that. All that good stuff. So who's Academy for? It's for everyone. It's really for everyone who can benefit from learning how to tell a better story, tell a stronger story. And really, obviously, what we talked about kind of here today is knowing what to focus on in the story, not even to tell a stronger story, but what to focus on, because that's typically the big mistake. So you get the course. You can see this was a screenshot from January we have different session topics going every week, interview prep, uh, essay review, Q&As, anything and everything. That's what we're doing day in and day out with our amazing team, former director of admissions at UT Southwestern, uh, former executive director at TMDSAS, Dr. Scott Wright, uh, former director of admissions at uh, Burrell College of Osteopathic Medicine, uh, former senior MD admissions officer at Stanford. These are the people that you get to hang out with for the hour, multiple times a week to pick their brain, to get their feedback, to help guide you and support you. Uh, and there's me, little, little someone. We also have some amazing TAs as well. Uh, lots and lots of office hours. You get 12 months access to hang out with us and uh, go through everything. You can see we, we charge a lot of money for... Um, for advising. This is the same price for a one-on-one -on -one mock interview as well. Um, it's a lot of money. So I did the math, 312 hours of group advising. That's a lot of money. Obviously, I'm not going to put that there. So um, there's more stuff too. You get all my books. I'm just going to flip through these real quick. Uh, get all the books. You get awesome uh, Facebook group, our amazing Facebook group uh, page here says it, I was a... Uh, it was amazing to have support from applicants that experienced the same feelings and frustrations I did throughout the application process. I think too often pre-meds are too siloed and uh, and lonely as they go through this process, and you don't need to be. You don't need to be. Um, you get access to a couple um, courses that I did uh, in the past. They were kind of beta courses testing out this group setting, and it worked really well, so you get access to those as well. And then uh, you get a year of mapped pro. You can communicate with our advisors uh, outside of office hours. You can uh, use my LORs, which replaces Interfolio, except for TMDSAS if you're applying to them. Uh, you also get mapped mail, which is an awesome feature. Uh, lots of fun stuff. And if you sign up before the end of the week, you get a free 15 minute one on one mini interview session with one of our. Uh, advisors working on tell me about yourself or why medicine a little free little uh, bonus 15 minute interview session with one of our advisors so go check out all of that applicationacademy.com you see that final price there <laughs> add it all up almost $6,900 obviously uh, that is not the cost of application academy um, again you can see we charge a lot of money for one-on-one -on -one advising uh, but for Application Academy right now, it's $4.99. We're closing the door to Application Academy this week as well. Um, so not only uh, can you sign up by the end of the week to get a um, a free 15-minute or bonus 15-minute interview session, it's the last time to sign up as well. So. Uh, applicationacademy.com is where to sign up. If uh, you're an FAP student, we do have an FAP discount. There's no extra discount on top of the FAP discount. It's all at applicationacademy.com. Um, Taylor here. I signed up for Application Academy because I wanted this process to be a one and done thing. I wanted to be as best prepared 
I didn't know if I could afford to go through the cycle more than once. So investing in Application Academy was worth it to me if it made the difference between applying once or twice. And I truly believe it did. Awesome. Love it to Taylor. All right, friends. Uh, there is a uh, guarantee, money back guarantee. If you sign up, <clears throat> you get in there and you're like, yeah, actually, this isn't for me. Just let us know. We'll get you your money back. Um, there's some other things here. I'm going to skip through them. Uh, yeah, applicationacademy.com. Let's answer some questions. Uh, if you want to raise your hand, uh, you can unmute or you can just type up some questions if you can't unmute. When does the new cycle open up? So application cycle or application academy, uh, late D. Does the application academy help BSMD students? Application Academy is not for BSMD students. It's for uh, full, just regular application. We do um, help BSMD students essay-wise. I would just use our standard essay editing. Um, we don't do college advising, but we will help with um, the medical school essays that are part of the BSMD process. And then, of course, the interviews as well we can help up, uh, help with. How long should the response to tell me about yourself be? This, I love this question because there's no answer, right? It needs to be as long as it needs to be. Um, a lot of students are like, do two minutes. Or two minutes is too long. It just needs to be as long as it needs to be. Have a, a couple things you want to focus on and, and answer that. Uh, Dr. Greg, extraordinary helpful workshop. Thank you. Uh, when is a good time for current freshmen entering sophomore year this fall? Hoping to apply early decision. End of junior year, enroll in Application Academy. So Application Academy, we kind of think about um, the application cycle. Application cycle starts in May every single year. Um, application Academy will start. We're changing the format a little bit for next year, going back to a more structured um, syllabus. Um, this last, These last two years have been a little bit more unstructured to kind of help students come in uh, at any time, but we found that it's it's too chaotic um, and that students need a little bit more structure. So Application Academy will start, it starts at January every single year. Um, so just kind of work off of that schedule. Um, so if applying in May of 2025, Application Academy will start January 2025. Um, so I guess that, that answers your question as well, uh, Leite. Any difference in the interview approach in Canada versus the U.S.? No, I don't think so, because one of the, the key things, both from a personal statement standpoint, if you watched the personal statement workshop from last week, if you didn't, it's on YouTube, go watch it. And today, the core of the message is just be a human being and communicate. You don't need to go above and beyond that. So my my thought is, and I've... I've um, I know students uh, in the UK, Australia, um, and some other some other countries that use a lot of the same theories by my books and and use a lot of the same philosophy because it's just storytelling. Um, getting into uh, those schools, how does what we learned today apply to the MMI? It's exactly the same, right? So uh, think of that coffee shop conversation. You are preparing to not be prepared, right? Walking into a coffee shop to go meet with a friend, you're not sitting there thinking about all of the questions that can, can come up. Oh, guess what that is? You walk into that coffee shop, you have that conversation. That is a situational judgment test. That is what the MMI is. The MMI is a situational judgment test. We live situational judgment tests every single day. What's the situation? I'm supposed to make a judgment here. I need to give my response. I need to think through based on my morals, my ethics, my upbringing, my knowledge, my skills, whatever, how I'm going to respond in this situation. We do it every single day of our lives, but we freak out because we package it as an MMI, the multiple mini interview. Uh oh, what's that? It's just life. And yeah, the, the scenarios are a little more forced and weird and you're like, oh, that would never happen, or that's a weird situation. God, I hope I'm never in that situation. But we use our brain to go, here's what I'm thinking, right? Based on who I am as a person, 
I would think about X, Y, or Z. And here's why I would think about that. And here's what I would do. And yeah, there may be some consequences. And here are those things. <clears throat> it's just life. What would you do in real life? Um, if you're planning to apply for medical school 2025, yeah, so you would start in January 2025. Um, so MMI is definitely, uh, Farbot is, is there's really no connection with the interviewer, uh, within MMI. So that aspect of the, um, <clears throat> the advice doesn't really fit within MMI, but the communication aspect is the same. You're not trying to sell yourself. Well, knowing the, uh, seven, uh, legal aspects of, uh, of medical ethics, I blah blah like you don't need to go there, and a lot of students will do, do that. Um, again, if you want to raise your hand and ask some questions or whatever, you can do that. Uh, how do you answer questions about grades? You answer them honestly. Yeah, yeah, you you notice that? <laughs> yeah. That was a rough time. Here's here's what happened. Um, ownership is huge. A lot of times students are surprised that grades don't come up in an interview. MCAT scores don't come up in an interview. Again, they know your stats. They've reviewed your application. And they still decided to give you an accept or a, an interview. All right? They, they know that stuff. I wouldn't worry about it. All right. How do you answer why DO question when you just want to be a physician, don't care about the degree? So why DO is very important uh, for the personal statement. And this is a good kind of example for personal statements. I don't think the personal statement needs to be different because yes, you're saying, hey, why do, why do I want to be a doctor? For why do you want to be a DO? They're specifically asking you, and you have to have an answer. Unfortunately, the DO world has a little bit of an inferiority complex, um, kind of painting with a broad picture. So they want to know that you're applying to DO school because you are interested in being a DO, and you've done your research, and you've explored some of the, um, I, I hate to say the word, philosophies around being a DO. Um, our advisor, Courtney, former director of admissions, would hate when students would be like, well, I really like the the philosophy of being a DO. Like, it's just, it's a non-answer. Um, what she talks about often is reviewing the core tenets of what being a DO or osteopathic medicine is, reviewing those and kind of highlighting that and matching it to who you are as a person. What does that mean? <clears throat> Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Awesome, friends. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Again, applicationacademy.com, where you can come and hone your interview skills, hone your essays. Uh, all of that stuff, getting support uh, from a community. All of you participated well today, giving good feedback and support to everyone. That's what Application Academy is all about. I'd love to see you in there. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.